Hey guys, Fallout here with a brand new guide for you. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the Sunbreaker Titan, the numbers behind their abilities, and how to best utilize their talents in PvP. Overall, the Sunbreaker Titan has an okay neutral game and a great super game, which is capable of completely ripping through almost any team. Alright, let's kick things off by breaking down the Sunbreaker neutral game, starting with their melee. Unfortunately, like all Titans, the Sunbreaker has pretty bad melee range, being outclassed by almost every other subclass in the game. Their melee ability is called Sunstrike, and hitting your enemies with it deals pretty heavy damage over time. 12 ticks of damage over time at 7 damage each, for a grand total of 188 damage coming from one melee. There are three upgrade choices on the skill tree to modify your melee, and the first one is called Melting Point. While burning, your targets are weakened by both you and your allies. In short, any enemy you punch with Melting Point will take about 50% more damage than usual from everything while they burn. In my opinion, this is a great choice for PvE, but not really so much for the Crucible. Punching someone already does really heavy damage, so weakening their defense is kind of redundant, as they'll probably get picked off really easily anyway. Next up is Thermal Vent, which creates a solar explosion on a hit, and if you kill them with your punch, you'll make a sunspot on the ground that damages any enemy who walks over it. This perk is interesting. The explosion that happens on a hit deals an extra 13 damage, bringing your grand total melee damage to 201 overall. Meaning that yeah, if your enemy's armor isn't high enough, you can technically kill them with just one punch. Also, if other enemies are nearby your target when you punch them, the explosion makes it so that all of them will take the melee damage. The sunspot that appears if you kill your enemy with this punch lasts for about 7 seconds and does about 95 damage per second to anyone standing inside. Although most people you fight in Crucible won't be stupid enough to just stand inside a sunspot until they die, it still doesn't hurt to have them on the ground in a match, as it's just one more way to potentially deal damage to enemies. The last option is called Stoke the Forge, which reduces the cooldown of your melee ability and will recharge it completely if you manage to kill an enemy with it. So, how much does it reduce the cooldown by? Well, it depends on your strength, but the short answer is by about 60%. Not bad. Even with tier 0 strength, Stoke the Forge will fully recharge your melee in 24 seconds, which is less than how long it takes someone with tier 5 strength to recharge their melee normally. Definitely a good choice. Being able to use your melee ability more frequently is always a good thing. Now onto grenades. The first choice is the fusion grenade, which works exactly the same as it does for the Sunsinger. If you're accurate and stick it to an enemy, you get a one hit kill. Easy peasy. The next option is the brand new thermite grenade, which hits the ground and sends out a burning line of fire four times. Each time your enemy gets hit with the burst of fire, they'll take 47 damage, meaning that this grenade is not strong enough to get a kill, even if they get hit with the burst all four times. While this grenade can occasionally be helpful at keeping your opponents out of choke points, I don't really like using this grenade. The last choice is the incendiary grenade, which explodes for good damage and then deals damage over time. This is a good choice, and the one I use the most. The incendiary grenade is powerful enough to one-hit kill enemies, provided they're close enough to the explosion when the grenade goes off. The good news is, even if you miss, you're likely to still do decent damage, including the damage over time effect. Also, this grenade can be bounced off of walls, meaning you can use it to hit people from around corners. Now, I don't always talk about jump options, but there's a unique way of moving around really fast with the Titan called Titan Skating, which you can do with the jump option Increased Control. I don't want to make this vid any longer than I have to, so if you want to learn about Titan Skating, and trust me, you do, check the link in the video description for a really well-made guide on how to do it. Alright, now let's talk about the Sunbreaker Super Game. Their super is called Hammer of Soul. Activating it gives you the ability to throw hammers across the map which explode on contact and can kill enemies really easily. And I should mention that while in super mode, your titan gets damage resistance. About 55% resistance to be exact, meaning that it's much harder for enemies to kill you while you're busy blowing them away. Just to give you an idea how much a 55% damage resistance buff is, a sunbreaker can tank headshots from certain high impact snipers, like the thousand yard stare. Hammer of Soul is a great super that you can break out whenever your team needs it the most. Playing control and you really want to capture that territory? 
Hammers. Playing Rift and you really want to help your team push up and get the spark? Hammers. Playing Clash and you want to rush the enemy team's heavy ammo spawn and ruin their day? Hammers. It's really good. It's also good against enemy supers. You can break a Defender Ward of Dawn with three hammers. You can one-shot both the Stormcaller and the Sunsinger. Two-shot a Blade Dancer. And with high armor, you can tank a Golden Gun shot from the Gunslinger. Yep, that's pretty good. Hammer of Soul has three upgrade options, and the first is Forge Master. Throw more hammers, and hammers cause bigger explosions. Well, bigger explosions are always good, but how many more hammers does it give you to throw? Normally, Hammer of Soul will let you throw five hammers if you're throwing them non-stop. Forge Master ups that number to seven hammers, making this a good choice because, hey, who wouldn't want more hammers? The next perk is Sun Charge, which lets you charge forward during Hammer of Soul, kind of like Shoulder Charge for the Striker Titan. It has the ability to kill enemies, but I personally feel like I'd rather just smack them with a hammer anyway. You can use it, however, to move around a little bit faster while using Hammer of Soul, which can be pretty helpful. Not a bad choice if you know how to use it well, but I don't really prefer it. The last choice is Scorched Earth, which creates sunspots everywhere your Hammer of Soul hits. Like Thermal Vent, this perk is helpful at keeping enemies away from key areas of the map and has good potential for anyone who likes playing game types like Control or Skirmish. It also has another use, but I'll get to that in just a bit. Okay, now let's take a look at the other perks on the Sunbreaker skill tree, starting with this first column and the choice Flame Seeker. Your Hammer of Soul will alter its flight path to seek out enemies. I have to admit, this perk did not live up to my expectations. The hammer will change its path and home in towards your enemies, but only a tiny bit. And for the homing to even activate, you have to throw your hammer really, really near your enemies already, which kind of makes using this perk just not really worth it. Use what works for you, but I don't really like using this perk. Anyway, next up is Explosive Pyre, which makes it so that enemies killed by your Hammer of Soul explode. This perk is great. The explosion damage is enough to kill anyone nearby, and has the potential to set off crazy chain reactions. There's no real downside to using this perk. Last up is Fleet Fire. Enemies killed by your fire grant you bonus agility and reload speed, which stacks up to three times. This perk activates for anyone you kill using any of your abilities, not just your hammers. Kills with Sunstrike and any of your grenades will set off Fleet Fire. Here's a comparison as to how fast your reload speed can get boosted by Fleet Fire. Not bad. Also, having a little bit of extra agility never hurts either. Over on the next column, the first choice is Simmering Flames. When super energy is full, grenade and melee abilities recharge twice as fast. This is a really interesting perk. Having your grenades and melee recharge at double speed is really good, but it comes at a big cost. It only happens when your super energy is full and you aren't using it. Considering how good Hammer of Soul is, it might seem crazy, but I do have to point out that if you're at tier 5 discipline or strength, your abilities will be recharging at a whopping 12.5 seconds. For the record, I made a neutral game only build with my Titan and went into the Crucible wearing my year 1 armamentarium, hitting tier 5 discipline. Yeah, I had two incendiary grenades that were recharging at 12 and a half seconds. I was completely barraging the other team with grenades, almost non-stop. This is a huge way of boosting the Sunbreaker neutral game, but like I said, it comes at a really big cost. If for whatever reason you want to go neutral game only, this is 100% the perk for you, but if you miss your hammers, then don't even worry about it. Next up is Cauterize. Enemies brought down by your fire regenerate your health. This perk works a lot like Hungering Blade for the Blade Dancer, a perk that I happen to love. Anyone killed by your fire, aka melee ability, grenades, or hammers, immediately triggers health regeneration. That's awesome, and it makes it so much harder to kill a Sunbreaker in Hammer of Soul mode, especially considering you're putting this together with a big damage reduction buff while throwing hammers. I almost always take this perk. Last up is Firekeeper. While standing in a sunspot, you gain an overshield, and Hammer of Soul lasts longer. 
Using a low impact auto rifle, I found out that a sunbreaker using Hammer of Soul standing in a sunspot will be brought down after taking roughly 294 damage. Again, keep in mind that while in Hammer of Soul mode, you get a 55% buff to damage resistance, so it's really tough killing a titan who happens to be standing in a sunspot while using his super. It's also important to remember that if you pick Firekeeper, you will automatically generate a sunspot whenever you activate Hammer of Soul, meaning that when you pop your super, you'll be able to take advantage of having an overshield right away. This is really handy for a lot of situations. Outnumbered and trying to hold a key area of the map? Pop your super and get that extra overshield protection. Even when you're not using your super, having the extra health to protect you is always nice. The only problem is that your enemies can always just run away, leaving you to stand alone in your sunspot until either it fades away or your super burns out completely. On the same note, having your hammer of soul drain slower while in the sunspot is also great, but it doesn't mean anything if your enemy can just turn around and run away from you. This perk is still worth using in game types like Control, where you can make it much easier to defend zones by holding them down with a sunspot. Okay, this is usually the part in my guides where I talk about exotic armor. The Taken King is still pretty new, and I don't have all the armor yet, but I'm going to go through the options listed on the Bungie.net armory anyway. If I leave any piece of Titan armor off this list, it's because I either think it's a better choice for PvE, or just not worth wearing in general. If I ever make any revisions to this list of armor, I'll let you guys know in the comments. First up is Alpha Lupi, with the unique perk that lets you revive other teammates faster, be revived faster, and generates more orbs when using your super. This is a great piece of armor for team revive game types, and even though Bungie brought down the number of extra orbs you can generate wearing Lupi, it's still a good perk to have. Twilight Garrison has a unique perk that allows you to pull off an evasion move while in the air. Might not sound like much, but being able to have more mobility and quickly get out of dangerous situations could be really handy, and is definitely a good boost to the Sunbreaker neutral game. Next up is the Armamentarium, a classic from year 1, gives you an additional grenade charge and the ability to carry more heavy ammo. Having more grenades and more heavy ammo is never not going to be a good thing, and this remains a great piece of armor. The Immolation Fists are a new piece of armor which have the perk Accelerant, which gives you Explosive Pyre on the skill tree for free. Considering how deadly Explosive Pyre can be, this is great. Using this armor, you can have both Explosive Pyre and Fleet Fire at the same time, which would make you even deadlier when using Hammer of Soul. Next up is the Empyrean Bellicose, a new helmet which has the perk Anti-Grav Thrusters. Aiming weapons while in the air will hold you in place for a short time, and orbs collected while your super is full will recharge your melee. This is kind of like the Angel of Light perk for the Sunsinger, which I'm actually not a huge fan of, because I think in a lot of ways it makes you an easy target. Some people do like using this though, so give this helmet a try, but personally I think there are other better options. Moving on, an insurmountable skull fort has been updated for year 2 to give a second melee charge and the ability to respawn with full melee energy. If you like to melee a lot with the titan, this is probably the armor that you should go for. Finally, we have the dune marchers and their perk, speed demon. Increased sprint speed, extended slide distance, increased movement while aiming your weapon, and tighter turn radius while sprinting. That's a lot of stuff. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds like a great boost to the Sunbreaker neutral game, and this is a piece of armor that you should definitely try using. Alright, as always, I've put together a few sample builds that you can try out on your own in PvP. And, like I always say, just remember that none of these builds are carved in stone. At the end of the day, always use what perks you feel the most comfortable with. These are just a jumping off point. Anyway, that's it for now guys, hope you enjoyed the guide, and if you did, feel free to subscribe to my channel because I'm always working on more content. Don't forget to check me out on Twitch and YouTube Gaming, and if you want to chat, hit me up on Twitter. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.